Tamara and today I'm going to walk you through all of the steps that you need to know to be able to make a beautiful double gauze baby blanket with or without a ruffle. Now the two things that you do need to know before we jump into cutting this fabric and sewing this fabric is that you should really use a number three stitch length and second do not pre-wash your fabrics unless you're using different fabrics from different brands perhaps they're made differently then the shrinkage may happen a little bit differently but for the most part I would suggest not pre-washing this because when you pre-wash it it will get really really wrinkly and just that much harder to sew with so with all of that said let's jump into this tutorial This quilt here can be done with or without the ruffle. So you'll take a square piece of double-sided gauze. For myself, I cut out a 27 inch by 27 inch piece of gauze, and you will actually need two pieces of this gauze fabric. And then if you're choosing to add a ruffle around your blanket, cut out strips of the double-sided gauze three inches wide, and you will need around 160 inches worth of these strips. So for myself, I just pinned them right sides together and then sewed a half inch seam across each edge to create a really long strip of three inch wide fabric. Then I took this strip of fabric to my iron and I doused it in my best press, which I will have linked in the description down below, folded it wrong sides together, and then ironed it in half. To see the specifics on how I made this ruffle, I will link up above as well as down below to my ruffle tutorial, two ways to make a ruffle, and I used the easy method to make this particular ruffle. Once I turned those strips of fabric into into a ruffle. Then I laid my gauze fabric, just a single layer right side up, and I put my ribbon all the way around the outer edge. Now I just quickly had a look to make sure I had enough ribbon. If you don't have enough ribbon, then just add one more section to the end of your ribbon before you end up attaching your ribbon to this fabric. So I'll just pin all the way around, watching out for those corners. I will fold in my fabric a little bit more and do an extra pin on those corners just to keep them from ending up folded into the seam itself. Once the ribbon has been attached all the way around, I will match up the two ends of my double-sided gauze and just cut off the excess. And then I'll actually pick out some of the seam about three inches in, just enough that I can open up the end of that double-sided gauze, and I'll do that on both sides. Then I will line up the edge of my double-sided gauze, I'll take it to the sewing machine, and I will just sew a half-inch seam along the top, or a one-inch seam, depending on how much space you left when you cut the excess off. It doesn't have to be perfect, because you're working with a ruffle, and you're working with really nice, squishy double-sided gauze, so any imperfections that you end up making will be hidden by the adorable fluffiness that is double-sided gauze. So right here I'm just going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to attach our two end pieces of our ruffle together and then I will line it up along my outer edge and finish clipping it in place and then it's time to add our second piece of double-sided gauze on top. So we'll lay that one right side facing down and we will just attach it all the way around the outer edge making sure to mark one area with pins instead of clips. I like to do this because then I don't forget what I'm doing when I bring this to the sewing machine. And just mark a section around three to four inches in width with your pins and you will not sew over that section because that's the section that you will need to turn this entire project right side out. Then take it to your sewing machine starting at one pin, sew all the way around the entire outer edge at a half inch seam allowance, stopping at the next pin. So you'll end up leaving that three to four inch opening. Now if you are doing this without the ruffle, all you would do is lay your two pieces of double-sided gauze together. You would do this exact same thing, pin it all together leaving that three to four inch opening on one end and you will take it to the sewing machine and do this next step. So I sewed around the entire outer edge minus that pinned area at about a half inch seam allowance. When I made my ruffle, I created my ruffle at a quarter inch seam allowance. That way now when I'm sewing across my ruffle, I'm hiding the seam that created the ruffle in the first place. Once you've sewn around the entire blanket, then just clip away those corners and any excess ruffle that you have, just clip that away as well. We're essentially just trying to get 
get rid of as much bulk as possible. And then it's time to turn it right side out, making sure to point out all four corners. I like to use a chopstick to do this, but just be very gentle, that way you don't push out the entire corner. And once you've done that, then take it to your iron and just press down around the entire outer edge. I like to do this using my best press because it makes the fabric a lot more crisp. And while it's crisp, it makes it much easier to sew. And while you're ironing around the entire outer edge, make a special note of the opening and iron in that seam on both sides and then line up the ruffle on the inside between the two of them and then pin that shut. And of course, if you're not adding a ruffle, then this part is a lot easier. Just fold those pieces in, iron and pin across. Then take it to your sewing machine and we are going to sew as close as we can to our ruffle or the outer edge of your fabric. So at a quarter inch seam allowance would be best that way you'll be able to close in that ruffle and opened seam or like I said if there's no ruffle you'll still end up closing in that seam and if you're not using a ruffle then just line your sewing foot along the edge of your fabric and that will be a nice guide for how to sew around the entire piece of fabric and once you've sewn around this entire piece of fabric then your opening should be sewn shut and when all is said and done, this is what your baby blanket will look like after it's gone through the wash. For myself, I threw it in a warm wash cycle, and then I threw it in the dryer on a high heat. Well, not a high heat, but on a full dry. That way I knew that any shrinking and damage I would already do, so then I could gift this, knowing that a tired mom with a little baby does not have to concern herself with special washing instructions when it comes to the Double Gods baby blanket. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for future tutorials. I hope that you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now!